an interest in this and that you were accusing them of, of abusing you, right? Is that right? It, exactly. And they, they colluded, they formed an alliance against me. Okay. Now, was she found innocent of everything she was accused of? Everything. The judge didn't even entertain anything, didn't want to hear anything from me. So the judge, you didn't have a jury. You had the, the judge was already hostile to you. Is that what you believe? Absolutely. Okay. If you were to give she me, she said she thinks I'm crazy. She didn't say that yesterday, but she said it the time before. Okay. Do me a, a give me a short list of three to five things that the judge did that you felt was improper or indicated bias on her part. Number one, she was very disrespectful to me. Um, she prejudged me, um, which I think that is that should be illegal, and, and she needs to have some kind of evaluation. And if they check her record and see that she's done this before, then she should be sanctioned by the Judiciary Committee and possibly seek some therapeutic help herself. Um, uh, she allowed a bunch of cases to be heard um, at the same time. I was even confused in there. Um, she hushed me up a lot, um, actually loud talked to me a few times and frowned at me. Um, she acknowledged to Sadiqwa, I don't know if I've got number five, she acknowledged that she knew that Sadiqwa was upset about her money, which was why she was bringing me to court. But it, it also is because they tried to make it seem like I was bringing her to court because I owed her money, which is crazy in itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to that, do you know my attorney did not get the evidence I still requested from him. He came in there blank. He used the police report as the only uh, evidence that was admitted in D1. That was it. Mm -hmm. I've asked so many times, I even had him to um, to try to, well, from the list that I sent you, subpoena the guy from Professional Standards, subpoena my sister, subpoena everybody, subpoena the woman that was the witness to the, the never knocking down the stairs, talk about the multiple restraining orders that she got introduced into evidence, the CDs or the transcript from when the dismissal occurred for that restraining order that she got illegally. They didn't want that admitted. Not at all. The, his final words to me were, um, at the end, he was like, and she, something like she did exactly what she said she was going to do. You know, and I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you didn't care. You said you didn't care if you got convicted or not. I said, no, I didn't tell you that I didn't care if I got convicted or not. I said to you that I cannot worry about what she does in the future. All I can do is say it. I'm not pleading to probable cause because there was none. And then from that, he kept saying, I said I didn't care. So your attorney, so hold on, hold on. The bus. Oh, your, your attorney was pressuring you to take a deal. And he kept characterizing your refusal to take a deal in, in the concept, concept of you not caring at all about the case. Is that right? Exactly. Exactly. But, and saying to me that because I would not take the case, you know, plead the probable cause, that the lawyer, I mean, the judge would probably think I was totally insane. He sat there with my mother sitting right there. Okay. All right. And when do you, what's, what's, what's happened since, have you talked to your family what are you, when are you going to be sentenced and what do you expect the sentence to be? Well, the, what she did was issued me a fine of over $500, it turned out to be, okay? But um, the incident with the phone call from the police officer to, officer to me, they were just ordered yesterday and only because she, she asked about it, all oh, right? So, so you've, um, been, you've been sentenced to a $500 fine. Are you going to have to do any jail time? No, no. But I have a criminal record now. And that's pretty harmful to your business? Yes, it is. I cannot practice. I will not get a job. I was about to go and do an internship to get my substance abuse and to continue off to get my licensing for marriage and family therapy. I will not get hired. I will not be able to do the internship. My job as a professor, that's going to be moot as well. I, I just give up now.
you know, I just give up. There's nothing to do. I'm going to have to go get some waitress jobs someplace or something like that and waste all of this education. So now, I called Sadiqa last night, Mr. Kamal, all right? Mm -hmm. And I asked her, do you know what you've done? I said, do you know that you actually testified against me in court with a stranger? She said to me, well, I don't know what you're mad about. I said, I'm not mad about anything. I'm, I'm, the final little piece of my heart that's left is broken into pieces because of what you've done. I said, you did it for a phone call to Dyfus and for $3,000. She said, well, nobody told me anything. I was like, I was sexually abused. I was physically abused, all right? I told her, I passed the hope, and now I have seizures, and you're telling me you didn't know anything about it? She said, no, nobody told me. All right? I said, you didn't know I didn't have a job? She said, no, I didn't know that. I told her, I have nothing to give you. So I even had to explain to her, I said, do you know that the night that you had me arrested for Erwin, the money under my mattress that we used for bail was the money that I was about to give to you? She was like, I didn't know that. I, was just, I just told her, look, just know this. I love you, okay? I will never stop loving you, but I'm done, all right? I'm just finished. I said, this was the last time I will ever talk to you. I said, I just wanted to, to touch base with you, say what I had to say, and get it over with, because we've never been in relationship, Mr. Kamal. Yeah, I'm sorry, continue. I'm sorry, Ms. Johnson. Go ahead and continue. Ms. Johnson with you trying to protect her children, is that correct? Yes. They were with me all the time. She was drunk. There were men coming in and out of the house all the time. They had keys, including that supervisor that was there that day. You mean one of the police, your, your sister was, your, I'm sorry, your niece was dating one of the police officers? Yes, I would call it dating, but yes. <laughs> it was the supervisor. He was having a relation a relationship with your with your niece. Yes, and that's how I initially recognized him when he came there that day. But I always saw him playing clothes. And I just kept looking at his face and I just saw how rude and obnoxious he was to me because he never came to nobody ever spoke to me, okay? They only went straight to her. Now she was in the back of her house and came running out to the front. So when the, when the so when this police incident happened, your sister had I'm sorry your niece had already established a relationship with the officers who arrived at the scene. Yes. Yes. Did that ever come out in court? No. The lawyer wouldn't let it come out. You know I can't speak over him. I tried to a couple of times and I was shook by the judge. Or the other side objected to me saying anything. Okay, let me stop it there. Right. Um, what I was saying was stricken from the record. <laughs> okay, let me let me stop the recording there.